We hewed one floor joist log with a broad axe. We laid it out uh, with the lines and snap lines on it. Then I hewed down to the lines. Now this is another system or a way that you can actually flatten the tops of your joist if you have an Alaskan mill and a, and a good power head. This is my Alaskan mill sitting on top of that timber, the light colored timber. And I'll use that big bad boy right there on the ground. That's a, a 394 Husky with a 28 inch bar on it. That's what I, and I'll set that Alaskan, the mill over the top of that top timber. Now this is kind of a poor boy setup that I'm doing here. I've got the log up here and I'll be able to run my mill right down the top of that timber, the one on top, the, the light colored one, and I'll cut a flat top all the way down that log. It'll be nice and flat all the way down because the mill is riding on top of that timber and it is level and it's anchored down to the sawhorses so it can't move. And any any curves or crowns that you have in your log, if you'll turn that to where the crown will be parallel with the bar on your chainsaw, and then you're keeping that curve or crown, which is really what you want to do in a situation like this because you keep the thickness of your log that uh, makes it stronger that you can actually use for a floor joist. Now on this timber that I have on top where it's sitting on the sawhorses, I put a reference mark here on the timber and actually on the sawhorse top uh, too, so that I can put this timber back exactly where I had it each time I cut a joist. You can see that I leveled this end of the timber. I had to put a wedge in underneath there to actually bring this up to level. And I did the same thing at the other end and brought the timber up to where it was level with a wedge, and that will keep the flat surface of the timber from side to side level all the way down from end to end. I'm going to show you how I'm keeping this kind of the way that I want it. If you look under here, you can see a pencil line that I made, just made it by hand, just freehanded it. That will give me a good width there, if you look at it, for the surface for the, for the floor. And I took my tape and I measured from the underneath side of the timber down to my mark on the end of the joist, and it's about three and a quarter inches. Now the thickness of my timber is oh three and five sixteenths uh, we're going to call it three and three quarters or three and three eighths this is not totally precision work here but we'll be doing that that later but i set my alaskan on six and a quarter i added the thickness of my timber then from the bottom side of my timber down to the top of my mark and i subtra subtracted three eighths of an inch which is about the thickness of the curve that this chainsaw will cut and then I set my mill, the height of it here, on six and a quarter, which, like I said, I subtract, subtracted about three-eighths of an inch for the saw curve. If you total three and three-eighths and three and a quarter, you come up with six and five-eighths minus three-eighths of an inch for the saw curve, and that gives you six and a quarter inches. That will be pretty close to what I want from the underneath side of this down to where the bottom side of the chainsaw bar the the teeth will actually be cutting right at this mark here if you can see i've got some wedges here i had to raise the tip with a small end of the log i had to raise it up just a little bit so it would match the other end from here to here okay i'm going to put the the alaska mill i'm going to set it across this timber and then I'm going to slide my bar, my, my chainsaw bar, in here and right through here. And then I will tighten these nuts down. And then I'll be able to fire this thing up and uh, be able to slide it across the, the timber and saw the top of the joist flat. I'll just slide it all the way down.
I went the full length of this joist. I'll come back and I'll remove the screws in the timber that are there that helps to hold it steady or actually keeps it steady. It keeps it from sliding around, but it's probably not going to with just the weight of it. It's pretty heavy. But I do that just to keep it in a certain spot there where I've got it leveled up. And I'm going to unscrew these screws here and move this out of the way. There you have it flattened on top. It's an easy thing to do and it can save some hewing. Now if you want to hew yours, that's fine. I encourage you to do so. Because hewing's enjoyable and it will give you some experience with the broad axe. And you can use that experience when you get onto the wall logs. So I appreciate you watching. And we hope you had a, a very Merry Christmas. And may God bless you and yours through the new year.